in every pot. That used to be a phrase for what politicians offered. That when I'm president, there'll be a chicken in every pot because starvation was... There was a lot of hunger in America way back when. I would say the Democrats offer pot in every chicken. That they're offering pot for every chicken. You get that picture, of course. That's the difference between Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump in a nutshell. Trump is offering a chicken in every pot. And Sanders or Hillary would be offering pot for every chicken. I think it's funny. I can tell by the audience's reaction. They didn't even understand that it's too subtle. Okay, we'll move on. What a week we've had. Monday, professor says the Quran says Muslims can rape non-Muslims. Cameron in England said immigrants must learn English if they're to remain in England. Schwab says Europe will be facing a crisis with possibly a billion Africans surging north because of the oil collapse. And I said how we've devolved from I have a dream to I have a scheme in one generation. Portland Community College calls for a month of white shaming. I then said liberals are nice people, but they don't understand the real world and how it works. I also said millionaires and billionaires who run the Democrat Party drove Jim Webb out. Tuesday, here's what we talked about. They want to ban Donald Trump from England like they banned Michael Savage from Britain. And I said, wouldn't it be funny if I joined Louis Farrakhan in a lawsuit against England? <laughs> I said, England gave us the Magna Carta, and now it's a nation of slaves living on a slave island. I also said Hillary's email scandal is the biggest story of the day. She transmitted emails higher than top secret. Many former attorneys general said she should be indicted. Who is she being protected by? I'll let you figure that one out. On Wednesday, I said I defined conservative in 1994 as defined by borders, language, and culture. I also described to you that there are low-information voters on the right as well as on the left. That's the first time you ever heard that. I also told you who created the phrase low information voter. It was by a pop, I think it was by Popov, a liberal sociologist in 1991. I guess you didn't know that. I then said that cruise bots are using the same rhetoric that the communist organizers once used. Either you're 100% conservative, like me, or you're not a conservative. Well, it's unfortunate for Mr. Cruz that he supported Obama's uh, TPP, the Southeast Asia Trade Pact. Isn't that unfortunate that he's not so pure as he says? I then went on to Thursday. I asked you, what is a liberal? Remember on Wednesday we said, what is a conservative? And Thursday we did, what is a liberal? And I said, liberals are not so bad. They had an adage. They may not agree with you, but they would fight for your right to say it. And then I talked about how is it that liberal companies evade taxes? And I said that Jane Fonda is running a smear campaign against Trump. And she's now been joined by the National Review <laughs> and by crony constitutionalists in attacking Donald Trump. And that was the week in review. And if you care to comment on any of these topics, we have a few minutes left in this hour. And the phone number is 855-400-7282. Let me take one quick call before we uh, go on. To uh, to to the break, Sue on WMAL in Washington. Go ahead, please, Sue. What's on your mind? Yes, hi. I want to comment about the the statement you made that the hippie movement was not all bad. And I was one of the flower children in 1971. That was part of the largest mass arrest in U.S. history. We were picked up downtown. We were protesting the war and ended up being penned in outside RFK Stadium. Uh, just a mass arrest of 10, 12,000 of us. Eventually, the uh, charges were all dropped, and the ACLU came in and got us all a settlement for the uh, violation of our constitutional rights of free assembly. The only U.S. citizens in history, our history, to ever receive financial compensation for violation of our rights of free assembly. And after that sorted, uh, you wait, know, wait. So let's stop right there. So you think that the Black Lives Matter movement has a right to block bridges during rush hour and drop and, and prevent working people from going to their jobs? You think that's a good thing? I do not think it is a good thing. And and um, I'm just saying that the Republican president Nixon um, had no problem violating our constitutional rights. All we were doing was just by, um, protesting the war. We were not doing... Right. Oh, okay, I got it from that period, but it seems like you've changed politically because you understand how destructive some of these sit-ins are, and it's not really about free expression. It's about blocking other people's uh, freedom of access and freedom of movement. 
That's exactly what it was. And I grew up, I got smart, and, and now I'm on the overpass on 95 in the bluest of the blue states, Maryland, with a group of people with a banner every Friday afternoon, except today where it's snowing. But uh, we have a banner that says, Trump, he can't be bought. And <laughs> Now, isn't this, so this is what I'm getting at. That's what I'm tapping into here. You're a former flower child arrested in a demonstration, and now you're for Trump, and now you understand where I stand. Now you understand why the crony constitutionalists and the RNC hate me, because I can't be bought either. That's exactly right, and I, I, I love you. I think it's fantastic to have you on the air every day. I love listening to you, and in fact, Michael, when my daughter was uh, accepted to Cambridge University for her master's program, I would not give her the money to go. I said any country that won't allow a patriot like Michael Savage to come into their country is not getting a dime from me or my daughter. <laughs> oh, God. So don't tell me she went to Maryland State. No, she, she ended up going to another university for her master's, met a great guy, got married. And she's uh, a millennial, 29 years old. She's voting for Trump. My husband oh, my God. You see, this is, the, this is the landslide I'm talking about. This is why I'm being attacked, why I'm being slighted, why people on both the Republican and Democrat sides distrust me because they can't own me. Did you hear me reading John Dunn today, Sue? I love John Dunn. And in fact, Michael, this is the second time. Stay on the, stay on the line because this is what I'm talking about. This is my show right here. Back in a minute. Well, we're almost out of time on this show. I mean, that caller was so typical, I think, of the millions, tens of millions of independent women in this country who also were wild, in a way, free. I don't mean they were crazy uh, nymphos. I didn't say that. Everyone you say, if you say flower child, you assume every woman who was a liberationist was a sexual mad woman. It's not what I'm saying at all. They were political independents. They were politically free. They hated the rigid system. They hated the rigid establishment of warmongers is what it came down to. No, maybe they were swayed by communists and didn't even know it. But I, would, I can guarantee you that most of them today are not Jane Fonda types anymore. Anyone who's gone out into the real world, had babies come out of their bodies, watched the babies go through life and become adults and have babies of their own, I guarantee you they're conservatives by today. Now, I say conservative, I realize not as pure as Ted Cruz. After all, they may, may not be in favor of TPP. Uh, of trade with the uh, Southeast Asian nations. <laughs> but they're nationalistic. They want the country saved from the Hitlerites of today. They don't like a government like ours that tries to impose Jeffersonian democracy on tribal cultures in Afghanistan or Iraq. It can't work. It's impossible to work. It's stupid to have imposed this kind of idiotic strategy upon Iraq or Afghanistan. That's what allowed ISIS to, to rise. They hate political correctness when they see Muslim fanatics being led into Europe and raping women, and instead of the governments cracking down on the Muslim immigrants and throwing them out of the country, they're cracking down on the men of Germany who are trying to protect their women. That's America today. That's what my show is about. Thanks for listening. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-728-SAVAGE. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Carpe diem, welcome to The Savage Nation. Maybe I should name my next boat Carpe Diem, but I don't think there will be a next boat. Maybe I should name my next dog Carpe Diem. It's Latin for seize the day. 
The first hour, I had a good time. Second hour, I had a better time. The third hour, I hope to have a better time with you. Uh, the phone number here is 855 I'll tell you, my favorite calls is when I said to you, are you a former flower child or hippie who's become politically different? I didn't say conservative because the word has no meaning anymore. When you see people who are crony constitutionalists disguised as conservatives attacking anybody who doesn't conform to their concept of what a so-called conservative is, and when you see the so-called conservative National Review attacking Donald Trump, believe me, the word is dirty. It's, it's been muddied. It has no, no valid meaning for me. That's why I've been talking about it all week. I knew this day would come. The day would come that Jane Fonda agrees with the National Review, you know something is, is up. And that is that a true uh, independent has arisen. And nobody, neither of the parties, know what to do with them. And so that's why I read to you from John Donne, no man is an island on tire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me, because I am involved in mankind. And therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. See, Hemingway quoted that in his novel, For Whom the Bell Tolls. And he got it from a writer, John Donne, a poet from the 1600s. That's when books were great. That's when the films were great. Instead of the Harvey Weinstein version of theater today, film theater, where every movie has to start with a gun. Every, every movie has to be, have someone knifed to death. And then he can run a, a campaign against the Second Amendment, old Harvey. You want to know what New York values are? I think that's what uh, they were hinting at, hypocrisy. And I don't think it's limited to uh, liberals, by the way. That's what I've been trying to tell you. There was another poem I used to remember from a college. It was called To the Virgins to Make Much of Time. That became our favorite poem at Queens College. <laughs> because in those days, we had intelligent women in the classroom. And those of us who wanted to date intelligent women had to use poetry. <laughs> So we somehow someone latched on to the virgins to make much of time, which was written by Robert Herrick in the 17th century. And all we remembered was gather ye ro rosebuds while ye may, old time is still a flying. And this same flower that smiles today, tomorrow will be dying. And we thought we were so smart when we said that <laughs> to the girls in college. The glorious land, you know how, you, know, you get what this is? The age is best, which is the first when youth and blood are warmer. But being spent the worse and worse, time still succeed the former. Then be not coy, but use your time. And while ye may go marry, for having lost but once your prime, you may forever tarry. <laughs> now, Robert, you're in your 20s. Did you have to use poems like this to meet women? You did? No, not at all. You just offered them a bud. Anyway, <clears throat> 1648, can you believe this? So you see, even in those days, people were dating and going out, getting married and having children. Can you believe that? People in the 1600s dated and went out and had children. How do you like that? You think you're the first ones to do it, right? You think you're the first ones to do everything. Well, you're not. You are not. And you're not an island unto yourself, let me tell you that. So let's go to the callers. I've been having a very good day so far. Somber though I am, the show I think is great. Because I don't think you have to scream and yell and have someone to hate to do a great radio show. You know what I'm saying? That's something you do when you're a, a novice in radio. You make a lot of noise. You stand out. It, it, you know, I'll tell you what it is. I remember when I first started in radio, a, a program director said to me, well, he hired a guy who was very loud and obnoxious, made a lot of noise, attracted a lot of attention, and he got rid of him after six months. And I, I said, what's that about? He said, well... He said, when you open a new McDonald's, he said, you have to put a clown outside that screams a lot and yells and honks his horn to get the drivers to come in. But once they start coming in, you don't need that clown anymore. <laughs> of course, he was sending me a message. I was a new in radio 21 years ago. This is the problem with media today. Many people are like that clown outside the McDonald's. They still think that they have to honk the horn and bang the bell in order to get you to listen or to read. You don't have to. I think that intellect itself is the sale. Whatever you have that's good, people will hear. And whatever you have that's bad, people will hear, and they'll make up their own minds. And that's the same with the campaign. We don't need to scream and yell and call everyone a name every second of the day in order to make our point, do we? 
It's true that Obama is the retrovirus who has triggered this partisanship in a way it's not been seen in the country.